Hey, this is Carolina Tony, and we're going on a trip today, and I want you to come along with me. But, right after the station identification. portion of the Science and Industry Museum, and uh, I'm up here on the moon, but I'll be right down to show you around. After the Mercury project, next came the Gemini series, and this is a mock-up of a Gemini spacecraft. Still not a lot of room in there to move around. This is the Apollo 8 spacecraft, December 1968. This is the actual spacecraft. Apollo Lunar Module was a trainer. They could practice coming down the ladder so they could learn how to do the moonwalk. Well, this was before Michael Jackson perfected it. While on the moon, the three astronauts William Anders, Jim Lovell, and Frank Borman. They read passages from the book of Genesis. Strolling the streets as we've gone back in time. Do a little window shopping. Looks like a beer hall. All the beer steins in there. Hey, Rotary International meets here. This museum, just a little area set aside. So you can see what things look like back in the turn of the century. This steam engine, number 999, broke the speed record 112 miles an hour in 1893. And in 1934, they retired it and it came here. It came here to Chicago in 1893. It was exhibited at the World's Columbian Ex Exposition and it returned to Chicago for World's Fair in 1933 and 34. And then it came here in 1952. Of this incredible locomotive, and I would like to tell you how the 999 came to be. In 1891, the New York Central and Hudson River Railroad put into service a new luxury passenger train, the Empire State Express. It ran from New York City through Buffalo to Chicago. Mr. Davies, who ran our passenger service, in Chicago in 1893. This fair would feature a great display of railroad equipment from all over the world. Mr. Davies was trying to... Here is a model of Chicago. Look at this steam engine here.
circulatory system. Yeah, all of that red. Blood goes through. That's unreal. This is the Picard gondola. Was a, a balloon. And in 1931, Augustine Picard and Max Costas, they became the first to survive a high altitude using this. 40,000 feet in this pressurized gondola. I'm probably not pronouncing this right. Stuka was a German dive bomber. They were used in World War II. There is a Spitfire. It was also used in World War II. Here is a replica of the Wright Brothers plane. It took off on its own power, a Kitty Hawk. December 17th, 1903. Here are some old stagecoaches detail on these things the paintings on the side this is a Conestoga wagon it's what the settlers would have used across the Great Plains with all their belongings. We're in the circus portion of the museum. And Barnum and Bailey circus elephant with blue eye shadow. Uh, must be a girl elephant. This ferocious lion. I wonder what the Coin operated things for. There's some clowns. Hello, everybody, Carolina Tony. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you're here for the first time, be sure to go down here and click subscribe. After that, ring that bell so you'll be notified every time we put a video out. Today, we're at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. We're going to look at a lot of old bones, some mummies, and a lot of other old stuff that you'll find in museums. And that's what he would look like. So they say. And here are the actual bones. We are going into a Pharaoh's tomb, 2407 BC. So we go into the tomb, we explore the There's a little passageway here with different types of pottery. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our visit to the Field Museum. Really interesting. Thank you for coming. Y'all be sure to come back. And for now, y'all have a good day. And here's on the wall all kind of strange paintings. Yeah. Egyptian and a loincloth leading a cow.
Bob's got the sign. Hieroglyphs written on the wall. Here's a mummy who was buried right down there. This mummy was buried about 2,000 years after the pyramid was built. They said that the basic needs of a dead person didn't change a whole lot over the centuries. You see how the markings on these walls, they were once elaborately painted, but over the years it's worn away. You've got this protective plexiglass over the wall to keep people from touching it. Yeah. Yeah, put him in his it's, actually, it's actually carved. How is everything else going? This is a village shrine. It honors the kindly cat goddess called Bassett. They say much love for her nature, strong, fertile, and agile. The cat goddess Bassett also represent the warm, life-giving sun. And you know, the ancient Egyptians, they were all into cats. And there is written on the wall here. I'm not going to take the time to read it. But it is a cure for killing a sick cat. And they buried their animals. Here are some falcons and other types of birds. Okay, this is a boat that was found in a tomb of a pyramid. Full scale. This thing's thousands of years old. And then we put it in there so the Pharaoh would have something to cross over the water into the afterlife. Boat and three others like it has caused some disagreement among the scholars. Some have believed that the boats were intended to take the Pharaoh on his afterlife journeys to the sun, the stars, and others believe that the boats are too poor in quality and were merely just used to transport the barges to get the dead king and his goods to the burial site. Okay, here are some reeds amongst the bulrushes. Maybe if we look real hard, we might find Moses in there, you reckon? Okay, we're gonna study about early Americans. There's a woolly mammoth. There's some tusk from a, a mammoth. There's some urns that were found. Said they honored ancestors as supernatural beings. That's kind of big there. That's from the, the Aztecs. And these artifacts in here would have been things that you would have found in the Aztec civilization. These are the different clothing worn by Indians. Uh, this one here is a Rapaho. Next to it is a crow. There's another Arapaho. A Sioux. A village. I would gather some Western American Indians would have lived in. Maybe Pueblos. Made from mud. 
a wooden roof. Eskimo. Kayak made from seal skin. Sled dogs and clothing that were worn by early American Eskimo. These are more Northern Indians. I can't say their name, but I'll show you. It's clothing that they would have wore. Looks like a little kid's outfit made from fur. Little fur booties. There's a nice exhibit there with a lady inside her, her lodge with the totem poles. You ever wonder what inside a igloo would look like? Well, this would have been an Eskimo semi-subterranean house. And this is kind of what it would look like, covered with snow. And I imagine these blocks were probably made out of some type of earth or, or perhaps even some type of manure packed together. more clothing really nice examples of Native American with attention paid to a lot of attention paid to detail this would have been a shaman dancer which is a religious man and these masks here all represent something. They were Central Northwest Coast Mask. Here are more. All used in some type of ritual. Here are even more. Southern Northwest Coast Mask. There's other ceremonial equipment used in different types of ceremonies. Sitka Indians at Potlatch. And look at these totem poles. These things are probably anywhere from 12 to 15 foot tall this is the entrance totem there's a raven on the top it represents the spirit of the sea and it would be in front of a house and you would go through this to enter the house. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our visit to the Field Museum. It's really interesting. Thank you for coming. Y'all be sure to come back. And for now, y'all have a good day.